two high school friends of mine called me out of blue and they said, hey man, we're in Silicon Valley, we're writing mobile software. This was in 2003 and so I did what every other self-respecting person in 2003 would do in that instance and say, who the hell writes software for phones? What do you want to be when you grow up? Sure, my name is Chris Hazeman. I'm the lead Android engineer for the website Tumblr. Welcome to How to Become TV. My name's Jace. This is where wannabe coders become pro. Now to do that, we speak with lead Android developer of Tumblr, Chris Hasseman. Chris wrote the book on Android development. No, seriously, he wrote the book. It's linked up below. Android developers have gotten a bad rap in the past for poor design, lack of consistency, and a general inability to make the same kind of money as an iOS developer. That's why we wanted to speak to a guy like Chris Hasseman. He's not only known for his stellar design, that's why he was hired by Tumblr, but he was a former developer for Double Twist, which has performed fantastic in the Google Play Store and made some serious one of the things that's very important to Tumblr is the way things look. You know, every pixel has to be in the exact right place. And there, it is, it's really hard to find Android developers who make that a priority. Um, it's getting better, thankfully, because Android is getting more visually attractive. Double Twist is a great app, and I think we got a lot of mileage out of taking design very seriously. Um, the, uh, the, we, had a, we had a great designer named Sebastian DeWitt, and he and I basically locked ourselves in a closet for two months, and we wrote the first version of Double Twist. Um, so really, uh, th that set me up for taking on the role as the Android engineer at Tumblr. Um, over the last year or so there, I've taken the Android app from being basically a web view with some posting capabilities to being a fully native application. Um, and it's been an amazing ride. Mm, I don't want to say that there could be one video that could change my life or yours, but if there was one, this would be a serious contender. You see, Chris is referring to an interview with Ira Glass. I've linked it up below. Why is it important, you ask? Well, it's really what separates the endless dreamers from the doers. And yes, the wannabe coders and those who actually become pros. All the textbooks in the world will not make you, will not magically turn you into someone who can write a lot of high quality code. The only way to write a lot of high quality code is to write a lot of low quality code first. Uh, and eventually, right, you will you'll get to a place where you appreciate the stuff that you can write yourself and you actually think that it's good. Um, Ira Glass has, a, has an amazing bit where he talks about how there is this gap where you know what you like, you know what you appreciate, you have taste, but you have no capacity to live up to that taste, right? Everything that you make looks like garbage to you, it looks terrible, right? Because you've refined your taste and you're now only beginning to get into the development of it. So, uh, you know, if I could go back and tell myself, you know, look, you're gonna go through a rough path right after you start doing something you're going to totally suck at it and that everyone goes through there's not a single developer that I know who has been effective and amazing right out of the gate it's a struggle and you have to struggle and you have to want it but it pays off you get through it you get over it you start to make things that you can really be proud of things that you can show other people and so you know Everybody says stick to it, and, I, and I'm just going to keep echoing that. You, you, know, you will get better, but you can't be afraid of failure. You have to keep trying. And one of the ways to sort of ease that dip uh, is to find a mentor, uh, someone who is not directly related to, some, to the things that you work on, but has a lot of experience and can help sort of talk you out of the abyss when you fall in. Um, so you know, find someone that you know who works on something that you work on or something that you're interested in, and try to meet with them you know, once a month for lunch. Uh, tell them about what's going on and ask for their advice. And, you know, find um since I've started doing that, that's been help. It's tremendously helpful for me. Um, you know, the other dip came when I started writing the Android book. There was nothing on Google about how to write Android software. No, there were no experts. Uh, I had no idea what I was doing, <laughs> uh, and so it was an it was an uphill battle. Most important thing to begin with. I mean, the, the the most important thing about being a developer is to develop. Um, you can watch as many videos as you want. It does not make you. Uh, it does, it's not going to make you a developer. You have to try and you have to fail, and you have to fail a lot, and you have to dust yourself off. Off and you have to fail again. Uh, eventually you will be successful, but you have to try. You can't sit on the sidelines and wait for something to come to you. You can't sit for a wait for a company to hire you with no experience. You know, the tools are virtually free. Uh, the phones are relatively cheap. Get out there, get a device, build something awesome, and then show it to people. Uh this is how to become.tv.